Hello Taurus, welcome to your May 2024 reading. This reading may resonate with you if you have Taurus placement in Sun, Moon, Rising or Venus. May is a fantastic month for you Taurus for two reasons. First of all, it is your birthday month. By the way, happy belated birthday to the April Taurus folks out there. An advanced birthday, happy birthday to those of you who are going to celebrate their birthday in May. So that's the first reason. The second reason is your ruling planet, Venus, is actually currently stationed in your house and so is Jupiter. And those two planets get along very well in your sign. And most of us know that Venus is the planet for love, luxury, indulgence, beauty, anything to do with the finer things in life. Jupiter, on the other hand, is the planet that looks after our goodwill, good luck, wealth, right? So I have provided some high-level description and high-level synopsis of all the celestial events that are happening in May in the description box below. For today's reading, I would be using quite a few oracle decks and tarot decks. And the names of all of these decks are also in the description box below. So if you are one of those individuals who either like to collect tarot oracle deck or are, you know, tarot or oracle connoisseur, you can take a look at them. Okay, so let's get started. We are about two minutes into the reading. I tend not to spend too much time in the intro. One of the things that I will do differently in this reading is not to do any channeling per se. I mean, clearly the entire reading is channeling. I'm, I'm channeling what I see on the card, but I'm going to let the cards do the talking more this time around than me channeling things ahead. Because this is such a massive month for you, I want these messages to be very direct and very clear. I hope this is making sense to you, Taurus. Okay. Jupiter and Venus is already in your sign. Mars is in the sign of Aries right now. Mars is the planet of action. Mars is the planet of ambition. So given that it is sitting right next to your to your sister planet of Aries, I do see a lot of movement in your physical environment as it relates to your career as well as love. All right, let's take a few cards. Your first card is out. It's Moonlight. Number 51 reduces to six. Something will be revealed. Something that you have waited a very long time for. Do you see the hourglass? Something will be revealed to you. Moonlight for me is, is all about revealing things that are hidden in the crevices of our soul. So if this is a more an introspective thing, then you are probably finding something about yourself, maybe finding an answer to a question that you have always nurtured within yourself, maybe a question relating to who you are, why do you act the way you act, what makes you happy, why do you get triggered by some people. So it, it could be a very introspective reflection or it could be something a bit more tangible. Something is, someone is revealing something to you or you are finding out something about your own self. So whether it's a soul exploration or unearthing of a, of a truth from somebody, we'll find out. So that's your first card. Number six is significant. All right, let's keep going. It's only first card in. We have quite a few decks to go through. Oh, wow. Okay. 
you have three more cards. You have healed the ouch. Number 38 reduces to 11. Yeah. Heal the ouch. Magical map shifter. This is number 52. So interesting. I have sequential numbers. You know how much I care about sequential numbers. So you have 51 and 52, which is 6 and 7. And then you have 38, which is healing the ouch. And then you have sacred pool, which is 47. Hmm. Interesting. So to me, it appears just based on these four cards. Okay, let me let me take a look at the bottom of the deck. The bone collector. Actually, Aries got that card. You have the golden palace, the bone collector, wandering circus. Ghost lands, details, details, and unexpected visitors. Okay, I just wanted to see the bottom of the deck, and clearly I'll be taking more cards from other decks as well. All right, so based on these four cards, what I'm seeing right now, and remember I said I want the cards to do the talking. I am going to do interpretation of these, but I want the cards to also resonate with you. Maybe there is a number or a word that you will resonate with more than I can explain it to you. Mind you, this is a collective reading, so you have to take what resonates with you, right? Not everything I'm saying will fit in your storyline. Overwhel overwhelmingly, what I'm hearing is that you are physically healing. You probably have gone through perhaps a a surgery, something to do with your health. It doesn't have to be a surgery, but it just came to me. There's a physical ailment that you're overcoming. So you're physically healing the ouch. There's also a mental ouch that you're getting over. And I kind of said that with the Moonlight card. It could also be something from your childhood that you experienced. It could be a trauma. It could be something to do with your actual physical body. For some of you, it could be something as more delightful as perhaps you've been carrying a lot of weight around your body and then finally you shed those pounds and there's nothing wrong with having a more fuller body i personally have a more fuller body i go anywhere between size 10 all the way to size 14 depending on the day depending on the month depending on my mood so there's nothing wrong with having a fuller body. My ideal body shape, given that I'm almost 50, I'm turning 50 next year, I would like to be around 140-ish so pounds. And given my height, I think that's my ideal weight. Um, it's higher than what my BMI should be. But I finally think that would be my ideal weight. So it could be for some of you that you finally have achieved that ideal weight and you've shed all those extra pounds that you were carrying. So that could be one of the way because I'm seeing the magical map shifter. It could be also that perhaps something happened to you as a child as it relates to your body. It could be you probably broke something and I'm hearing... For some of you, it could be something to do with your tooth or teeth and you finally got the replacement tooth or you, know, you finally have a crown in place now. So for some of you, it could be a very physical thing, a very physical healing. For some of you, it's a more emotional healing. With the ma magical map shifter, <clears throat> excuse me, with the magical map shifter, for me, this card is a very interesting card. This card talks about direction. This card talks about time. And this card talks about alignment, divine timing. 
because there is a moon in the background. This person is wearing a clock and they're holding a, uh, a compass and they have wings. So it's like a dragonfly. This card always evokes the energy of a dragonfly for me for some reason because of their double wings. So I feel like when it comes to magical map, map shifter, I usually read these cards intuitively, right? I don't go with whatever the, the, the book that comes with these cards have to say. I read them intuitively based on the image and based on the information I'm downloading. So for me, Taurus, what I'm hearing over and over again is that there are information and wisdom coming from your past life, your higher self, that will provide you sort of a blueprint. Maybe that's what's getting revealed to you. Remember when I saw the Moonlight card, I said something is getting revealed to you. What is getting revealed to you is the blueprint. It's the blueprint of your life. If you have always struggled with a purpose, if you always felt you don't quite fit in, and because I always felt that as a child, because I wasn't your average child, I was reading divination tools, I could speak to spirit. I, as a child, when I was 10 years old, I was reading Shakespeare and Tennyson and, and Byron and John Keats. Um, I read Wuthering Heights when I was 11 years old. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, Google. Like, I, I, I read classical novels and poetry when I was, before I was a teenager. And I was so ahead of my peers that honestly, and, and please don't mistake what I'm saying right now, sharing my life story. Um, I'm using that almost as an analogy here. Don't don't misunderstand this as my my ego trying to talk about myself in a very grandiose way. What all I'm saying to you is that in my peer group, when I was a very young person, I did not fit in because my peers. And rightfully so, because you're not supposed to be exposed to that kind of um, literature or education at that early age. They had no idea what I was talking about. So my group of friends, and I was lucky enough to, to be born in a family of educated people. My, both my parents are highly educated folks. And I was also lucky enough to have an extended family of individuals who, who knew what I was talking about. And then I also had very good rapport with uh, with my mom's side of the friend circle as, and my dad's side of the friend circle. So I had rapport and friendship with people who were well advanced in age and ahead of in age from me. So if you have as a child or even as a young adult felt that you are slightly out of place, your peer group is not understanding you, I think you're finally at a at an age where if I I don't know how to explain this to you you're finally at an age where your peer group are caught up with your level of intelligence because if you spoke like a 50 year old at age 5 clearly your peer group would understand it but if you are as wise as a 50 year old and all your peer group is also 50 year old, not necessarily they're all as wise as you, but at, at a minimum, there's a higher probability of you having more fulsome interactions and conversations with your peer group. And that's what I'm seeing with the magical map shifter, that the you have a better direction. You understand now. And I feel this card to be very grounded. You're also finally understanding why you went through some of your life's experiences. It was all leading you towards that, that goal. And that takes me... So you're healing all your ouches, 
emotionally, mentally, physically. Spirit is revealing things to you, your life's purpose. You finally have the ability to ground yourself and understand the direction of your life, the, the magical map of your life, the blueprint of your life. And then we have the sacred pool. This person is fully submerged in the sacred pool. I'm going to explore this sacred pool card a little bit more, but let me take a few more cards from another. I have two more Oracle decks to go through. May is going to be a magical, magical month for you. I'm doing this reading on the 1st of May. And as a Taurus person myself, I will tell you, I felt a shift in energy this morning when I woke up. I am not a morning person, although I do wake up pretty early in the morning, but I'm not a morning person. But when I woke up this morning, I actually felt energy, like I physically felt energetic. I don't go out for walks. I actually did go out for a walk today. I just felt a shift in energy today. And physically, I felt very fit, if I can put it that way. Okay. All right. This is only the first of the month. We have 30 more days to go through. Me, it's going to be extremely, superbly magical for you. Also, don't forget, Taurus, Jupiter is going to move from your house, your first house, to your second house of wealth and abundance in Gemini. So, let's take some cards. Oh, wow. Look at that. Manifestation. So, manifestation is sitting underneath the Moonlight card. You have friendship. I did tell you that you're finally... I shouldn't say you're finally. The world is finally catching up. Your peer group is finally catching up with you. You're finally going to have a group of people around you who will understand who you truly are. Okay? I have the justice card at the bottom of this deck. I'm going to put that under the ouch card. Healing the ouch. And I have the courage card under the sacred pool. Okay? Okay? So healing the ouch could also mean the universe balancing karmic justice for you. If people have wronged you in the past, if you were given the short end of a stick, or of the stick, I should say, then all of those things will be balanced. So the sacred pool, and I will be taking tarot cards for the sacred pool. Let, let, let's take some more... Oracle cards. You have the manifestation. So what's getting revealed? Like if you look at these two cards, if you look at these two cards, there's both of these women, and again, more dragonfly reference. Both of these women are looking at the moon, right? One is looking at the moon with their head down in anticipation to understand what lies in front of them. The other one is actually a little bit more exuberant and they finally crack the code as if. And there is a almost a depiction of celebration there. So what is going to be revealed to you is like I, I keep saying this is the blueprint. It doesn't matter how old you are. You could be 30. If that's the case, then maybe the blueprint is for the next 50 years of your life. If you're already 50, maybe another 50 years of your life doesn't matter what age bracket you're in. The friendship card is sitting underneath the magical map shifter card, which I've already explained. I explained the justice. I explained the uh, Hilda Alch. The courage and the sacred pool card. You also have, you will also find courage. There could be some Leo presence in your life. We'll get into it. There could be Libra and Leo presence. We'll see if the tarot cards confirm that message. There could be Leo, Libra presence in your life. 
in terms of either romance. These presents can be prevalent in, in romance or at your work environment. Okay, let's take a few more Oracle cards and then I will start clarifying everything that's on the table with tarot cards. Okay, Spirit, what else can I channel for my Taurus Collective, please? What else can I channel for my Taurus Collective? Welcome the new. Oh, yeah. Don't worry, I, I will be um, reorganizing all these cards so you'll have a full visual of all the cards that came out. Oh. What else, Spirit? Let's take three more. I channeled this, right? Dietary change. I said some of you may be losing a few pounds. Get to your ideal weight. Body shape. Keep the faith. Oh, that's under the justice card. I'm loving this. Healing of the ouch. The, karm the karmic. Karmic. The cosmic justice will be served. You keep the faith. All your ouches will be healed. And the realization and the epiphanies. Now I understand the sacred fool card. Bottom of the deck, you have you are stronger than you know. Family changes. You also have join in. You have religion and spirituality. Some of you could have, and I have the body changes again. Some of you could be going through some soul awakening during this time. So Taurus, give me a second. Let me organize these cards to make a little bit more room for more cards to take. And then I will walk you through. So Taurus, I've organized your cards a little bit. You can still see the keywords and so on. So let's start on this side. You have the realization and epiphanies. You have the courage and the sacred pool. This is talking about you having the courage to face your own self. There are things about you in the past that you really didn't have the courage to face. And I, I just laughed there. It was a no, I'm not laughing at you. I'm actually laughing at myself. There are things about me that I have realized as recently as last week, the week of my birthday, that I actually have never realized in my 49 years on this planet. So this is how powerful this time is right now. There are things about myself. I also realized where I like, lack courage, where I lack reverence. For me, the sacred pool is about reverence. I've had those realizations very recently, and I'll give you an example. Maybe this will resonate with you. I am, as a Taurus, clearly I like to eat, and I have a thing for food, but I have recently realized that I do not, and it's not that I'm poor or anything like that, but I, I don't put in a balanced, nutritious diet in my body. Right? I actually don't eat well, and I also don't eat in a timely fashion. So I never really had, and you may you may say what well, that has to do with courage. That has everything to do with courage. The the courage to Say to yourself that, hang on a second, you are not being careful with your own body. You're not being nice and loving to your own self. The courage to stand up against my own self and say, hang on a second, you've been deluding yourself. You've been lying to yourself. You've been unkind to yourself, right? The, the, the reverence that requires to maintain one's body as a sacred temple I wasn't doing that at all. And that realization, I'm not kidding you, just came to me a week ago. I was in my regular meditation and I asked myself, what am I learning? What What is my lesson as I finish my 
fifth decade on this planet and I turn 50 next year, what is my lesson? And, and it hit me. It absolutely hit me. Right? And even then, I mean, I um, I ordered some food earlier today and it just arrived a few minutes ago. And I'm looking at it. I ordered cheesecake and mango ice cream. So when it comes to doing proper grocery, I'm not very good at it. I'm a very organized person, but I'm not very organized when it when it comes to eating really healthy and good food. I eat food, expensive food, but not the ones that I my body needs. And that's why the dietary change card is here. It's interesting. So some of you could be going through that. So whatever this is in your life, however this plays out in your life, you are finding a new sense of courage and reverence to put yourself first, to put your need first. And this is no longer just a philosophical conversation in your head. You are actually putting yourself first in a more tangible way. Like I said, I don't go out for walks. I do. I went for a walk today. So I know it's not going to happen to me or for me overnight, but I am also healing my ouches. For the longest period in my life, clearly for the last 50 or so years, I've been suppressing my trauma with food. And again, that epiphany came to me a week and a half ago, that I have been addicted, not addicted is probably not the right word, I've been using food as a way, as a tool to suppress things that I don't want to look into, I don't have the courage to handle or deal with. So in a way, I've weaponized food against my own self. That realization and epiphany came to me because I finally have the courage to face that. Whatever your epiphany is, you are going to face it. You will heal the ouch because justice is not about, a lot of people misunderstand me, justice is not about karmic justice, co cosmic justice is not about punishing other people for doing wrong to you. That will happen in due course. Cosmic justice is about providing you with opportunities, providing you with the environment so that you can heal yourself. This is how you know when the healing process starts, this is how you know cosmic justice is served. If, if you have ever wondered, hang on a second, so people who have wronged me, are they just getting on with their life? No, they're not getting on the, with their life. But this is how you know whether they are getting what's due to them, because on the flip side, mind you, universe is very balanced. If universe is delivering tough life to those individuals who deserve it, then universe is also delivering good life to you who has been deserving this for a long time. So this is how you know. I already talked about a group of people finally catching up with you and meeting you where you are supposed to be Matt, for me, the biggest news is the welcome the new era. You're, you don't have to manifest anymore is what I'm saying. You don't have to do a damn thing, Taurus. And I said the same thing to you for last month's April's reading as well. You might want to go back. There's an entire playlist dedicated to you. I said the same thing. I said, you don't have to do anything. You just have to sit there and let everything come to you. What universe will reveal to you, what your own soul will reveal to you is that, it's very simple, I don't have to over explain this messaging. What universe will deliver to you is all your manifestation, everything that you either wanted or even didn't think of, it's all coming to you. And that's what universe is about to reveal to you. Okay, let's take some specific cards. How am I doing in terms of time? Very good. All right, let's take some tarot cards. Spirit, can I get some specifics as it relates to the month of May? What can my Taurus collective expect? Whether it's their family life, their love life. You have the five of wands. Mm -hmm. Overcoming conflict. 
overcoming competition, inner conflict. For me, this is kind of the healing the ouch. What else, spirit? Yep, you have the Empress. You have the Ace of Swords. Just in case you don't trust your most trusted terror reader online, you have the Justice card again. Bottom of the deck is the Hermit card, is the Emperor, the King of Pentacles, and the Strength card. Strength is the same as courage. So you have Hermit, Emperor, Emperor and Empress, Divine Coupling, King of Pentacles, and the Strength card. So what can you expect? Remember, in the beginning of this reading, I told you that you're going within. I said you will either, something will reveal to you. So it could be either something about yourself, which I kind of explained with the realization and epiphany card. Something about yourself will be revealed to you. And there is a level of self-exploration and self-introspection that you will go through in May. It's not even force. It's, it's interesting because a lot of people say, well, what does that mean? What do you mean I'm going to go through self-introspection? I said, first and foremost, if I have to unpack that to the level that you're asking me to unpack, clearly you're not, you're not ready for any inspection, intro or outro. My point is, this is going to be so natural for you. You'll just wake up one morning and you'll be like, ah, you will have epiphanies like the ones I just described about my own self. You are, you have been studying to pass an exam. It could be a literal exam. You could be studying for an exam with the Page of Swords. Page of Swords is a very student card. There you go. Page of Swords is a student card. So you could be literally studying for an exam. Spiritually, esoterically, you could be studying for your life's exam and you are about to graduate. With the Empress and the Emperor and the Justice card, there is a cosmic, karmic, almost, not almost. Why am I, why do I say the word almost all the time? There, with the Empress and the Emperor and the Justice and the Strength card, for those of you who are in a twin flame connection, a soulmate connection, this is the connection. This is the connection. It's coming online. It's not just coming online. It's it's getting grounded. It's becoming more of a 3D real connection as opposed to just the illusion of it or the concept of it. This is no longer a conceptual thing. It's becoming a reality. There's Libra, Aries, Leo, and Taurus. So you showed up. Aries and Libra. Remember, I was talking about Libra. Do you remember when I was saw the Courage card and the Justice card, I said Libra and Leo? So you could be dealing with a Libra or an Aries or a Leo, or you could have those in your chart. I have Libra and Aries in, in prominent placement. Aries is, my, is in my Jupiter. And then Libra, I have, I'm trying to think, I think my Neptune is in Libra. So your person could be a Libra, your person could be an Aries or a Leo or a Taurus for that matter. Your person, for some of you, is coming out of a marriage. There is no two ways about it because we have the uh, the King of Pentacles. They are coming out of a marriage with a Justice card. They could be, they were in a long-term marriage. They have a family. They have children with that, with their ex, with their spouse. They're coming out of it. Whether the two of you are getting back together or not, that is not the reason why they're coming out of a relationship. That relationship has ran its course. They're coming out of it. This is a simple, like, the, for me, there's no point to belabor the this message. Your person also now has the courage and the strength to finally find the balance in this connection, the connection between the two of you. You also now have the self-worth 
to understand what is it that you want in a connection. So the both of you are stepping in, in a very mature space. So this relationship is not a puppy love or, you know, looking at the world with colored, rose colored glasses. This is a very mature approach that both of you are taking. Because most of the times when I do twin flame readings and soulmate reading, one person is ahead than the other. That's how the connection works, right? But in this case, at this moment in the linear time, because human beings, we care about linear time. At this point in time, the two of you are stepping in very, very maturely into this connection. Okay, so that's what I've got so far. I would like to... So if, if this is relationship related, I, I'm seeing a very high level twin flame soulmate connection coming online. Coming online on a commitment basis. No dilly dally. No just let's go out on a date. We'll see if we click. No, no, you clicked. You clicked many, many moons ago. Now you are coming together in a very committal way where you know what you want from each other. Okay. So that's the relationship side of things. Before I could... <laughs> you have the Knight of Wands and you have the Four of Wands. I was going to ask Spirit about your career. Okay. I heard passion and stability meets corporate endeavor. Ooh. So whatever you're doing, whatever you're trying to launch... <laughs> Knight of Cups. So here's the interesting part. The Knight of Wands, the Knight of Cups. These are move knights are movement. Because knights are in a typical rider way deck, right? Knights are riding horses. So there's movement. And with the four of wands, there's tremendous stability. And I knew that you are finally going to be in a friend circle. The friendship card is there. You could be embarking on a partnership with a group of people. You could be getting a call from a former boss. I actually said this to you in the last reading. This message is coming through. You could be going back to work for a company that you left, or you may be going back, not back, you may be going forward to another job to work for a person that you worked in the past. There's a lot of momentum and Honestly, if you have recently gone through some work-related disappointment, that is about to come to an end. These are very happy cards. Look at the depiction of this, these cards. Let's take one more card on the carrier front. Oof, as if the Knight of Wands wasn't enough, the Page of Wands. There will be such a level of playfulness as it comes to your career. I don't know what you do for a living. And look mm -hmm. at that. The lover's card is at the bottom of the deck. And so is the two of cups and the hermit again. So the lovers and the two of cups. Are you kidding me? For some of you, this could be love at work. Like you could literally find your, your future husband or your future spouse at work. But what I'm saying is you are coming in alignment with people that you actually like you respect and do you know why you're coming in alignment with people you actually like and respect whether it's in love or even in fam family circle even in family circle you are finally coming together with people that you vibe with it's simply because you are revering your own self because you are putting yourself first because you have finally figured out who you are Universe is sending like-minded people your way. With the Lover's card, there could be Gemini presence in your life. Spirit is asking me to give you some dates. Okay, let's do that. Number 9, number 11, 3, 4, 8, 6, and 2. Significant numbers. Okay. All right. Spirit, is there anything else I could channel for my Taurus Collective, please? The reading has been superb so far. 
like magical is the word I'm going to use. There's going to be a lot of happiness. Do you, look at all the, the cards that are on the table. There's a lot of yellow and blue and red. Red is about passion. Yellow is positivity, sunshine. Blue is emotional balance and fulfillment. I care about colors, right? You're welcoming the new. You're just welcoming the new. Trust me on this one. Okay, you're just welcoming the new right, left, and center. It doesn't matter. So I would like to know if there's any advice for you. Like there's a lot of things going on with you in your... Uh, so look at this. You have the Knight of Swords from this card. You have the Page of Swords. You have the Knight of Swords. Do you see all these movement cards? You have the Knight of Cups. You have the Page of Wands and the Knight of Wands. You now have the Knight of Swords. There is so much movement. So if you were experiencing stagnancy, now, as I said that, the Page of Cups. These court cards are, for me, the Pages and the Knights are new beginning, initiation, playfulness, early stages of relationship. Doesn't matter what kind of relationship. So it's it's really reinforcing over and over again the welcome the new card, manifestation, right? You have the Knight of Cups. What else is there? Hang on. My card's sticking out. You have the Knight of Cups. All the Knights are out. You have the Moon. This is the third card with the Moon depiction. All the Knights are out. All the pages are out. Movement. As a spirit, is like, what else do you need? How many Knights do I have to give you? And mind you, they're coming from different decks, right? Okay, anything else, spirit? Oof, anything else? You have... The star card, which is Aquarius energy. Moon is Cancer. You have the hangman. You have the empress again. That's your energy, Taurus. I, oh boy, there's no point just saying the same thing over and over again. Hanged man is the Pisces card. So you have the moon, you have the Cancer, Pisces. So you have found the way. You have cracked the code. You figured out. You have a new perspective, right? You figured out your inner, your inner fear, your inner peace, and the balance between the two. You figured all of this out. And because you figured that out, people who are supposed to be in your life are rushing to you. The Empress card coming out twice, and now the Star card augmenting it, which is Aquarius energy. My darling, what I'm saying to you you're not only just the empress. I mean, the empress is plenty. You are the star. You're absolutely the star. The stars are aligning for this fantastic new beginning to take hold. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up this reading with one oracle message for you. And I always want spirit to give me the card that best summarizes everything that we talked about so far in this video. Okay, so here's the card. You know, I always take my card on camera, or at least I endeavor to. So here we go. This is a big, big deck. So I may have to, oof. Okay, this one card that fell, and I love this card. Hang on, it's the universe card. I told you, universe is giving you everything you want. Let's see what the message is. Always be in harmony with the universe. You are finally in harmony with your inner universe, your inner galaxy, the outer universe, the universe in your friend circle, the universe of your workplace. You are finally in harmony with everything. You have a new sense of reverence towards yourself. You're taking care of your health. You're taking care of your emotional body. You're taking care of your immediate environment. You're just glowing like the Empress and you're the star. Look, as a Taurus sun myself, damn, this reading is good. And I claim this reading. Let me know how this resonated. Taurus, save this reading. Come back. And uh, if it really resonated with you, leave me a comment. Don't forget to claim. Sometimes claiming things in a tarot reading really helps elevating the manifestation that you've already put out there. All right. Take care. Bye now.